welcome to An Evening for Hope, a telethon benefiting Rockford Rescue Mission. An Evening for Hope is brought to you commercial free thanks to our exclusive sponsor, Subway. Good evening, I'm Eric Wilson. I'm Candace King. And I'm Crystal Cohoon, Marketing and Communications Director at the Rockford Rescue Mission. Welcome to Rockford Rescue Mission's 23rd Annual Evening for Hope Telethon. How that seems like a big exciting. number. It is a big number. Another big number. <laughs> Rockford Rescue Mission is celebrating its 57th anniversary yes. this year equally as impressive. So far, telethons have raised more than $2 million. That's amazing. For, for people in our community. Absolutely amazing. So tonight, you will hear about how your gifts restore, uh, restore hope, change lives for men and women mm -hmm. right here in the Rock River Valley. Yeah, and we're so excited to share so many stories of just amazing life transformation that's happening right here at the Rockford Rescue Mission. And we want to give a special thank you to our gift and kind partners this evening, um, Clodius and Company with beautiful necklaces for tonight, as well as Nettie's Mercantile, a Rockford Rescue Mission retail enterprise. And a big special thank you to our exclusive sponsor of Subway. Yeah, you know, this year you might have noticed a couple of things are a little bit different as it's been like any other year that we have done the telethon. You know, uh, Chris Crystal and Eric, you guys have been working tirelessly to, you know, go out and do the interviews, which we would normally do in person. But now, because of everything that has gone on with, you know, COVID and taking the necessary precautions, uh, a lot of those, all of them have been uh, taped here this evening. Yeah, everything has been pre-filmed. And our first one that I'm so excited to introduce to you um, is two phenomenal women that are here at the Rockford Rescue Mission. One being our CEO, Sherry Pitney. Um, she has been with the Rockford Rescue Mission for 38 years. And you will see her running back and forth behind here. <laughs> she's tonight. always a blur because she's moving so quickly. Yes, yeah, on the yes. phone bank, she is here So as if well. there's a blonde blur on your screen, <laughs> pause it. You may actually get a glimpse of her. Yep, that is Sherry Pitney, as well as Ann Dittmer. She is our board chair. She'll be working our phone bank a little bit later on tonight and they're going to talk to you about what Rockford Rescue Mission has been doing this past year um, during COVID. Good evening. Thank you for tuning in tonight for an evening of hope. I'm Sherry Pitney, CEO of Rockford Rescue Mission, where for 56 years we've been serving the most vulnerable in the Rock River Valley. Even during this challenging days of the pandemic, our doors have never closed to meeting the needs of the homeless, hungry, and hurting. I'm Ann Dittmar, Chair of the Board of Directors of the Rockford Rescue Mission. Our board is honored to serve. You can be assured that we take our responsibility very seriously and prayerfully because we know people's lives are at stake. Our work is possible because of a dedicated and committed staff team who served tirelessly and heroically, walking alongside hundreds of precious men, women, and children by keeping them fed, sheltered, and cared for. They do this with respect, dignity, and great love. We have the utmost confidence in the leadership at the mission to make decisions that will provide opportunities for restoration and transformation. We ensure that our guests and residents are provided every tool possible to rebuild their lives on a solid foundation in order to be restored to wholeness personally and spiritually. Our work is possible because of you, a generous and compassionate community. For decades, and especially since the beginning of this pandemic, thousands have faithfully rallied around us to encourage and to support financially and with many in-kind gifts. The outpouring of resources has been humbling, to say the least. We're so grateful for our donors and volunteers. And just like us, we hope that you want to make a difference in the community where we live and work. It takes all of us doing our part to bring about real and lasting change. But most of all, our work is possible because of the countless prayers and the love of our great God, who sustains us and guides us through each day. We never tire of sharing the hope found in knowing Him. The mission was founded on great faith knowing that through God, all things are possible. The board continues to uphold those same beliefs and values to this day. Our work is far from finished though, and that is why we are bringing the mission to you tonight. We believe that in the days to come, our services for the poor, abused, and addicted will be needed even more so than ever before. Thank you for letting us come into your homes to share with you our inspiring stories of hope. We trust that you'll want to make a difference and be a part of providing life transformation for many right here at home. God bless you and thank you for caring. 
You know, I think Sherry said it so perfectly that this year the need is going to be greater than what it ever has before, just given everything that has uh, gone on. And we are so blessed to still be able to have the telethon yeah. this year, despite everything uh, that's been going on in the world with COVID. And you guys have done a wonderful job making sure those necessary precautions have been taken. So we've been able to do that. Now, of course, we can't go through the rest of this telethon without letting you know how you can donate at home. There are many ways uh, to make your generous gift here to the Rockford Res Rescue Mission. Uh, it's important to understand that the mission receives no HUD funding. So all of the donations that come in are from you folks at home throughout the community and businesses. There are many ways to donate. You can call the number there you see on the screen, 815-966-2842. And even before we started, the phones were ringing off the hook, of course, uh, accepting credit card, debit card, Visa, MasterCard, Discover, and online tow, too. I know we've done a lot of the online donations at rockfordrescuemission.org. And another great way to donate to the mission and to tonight's telethon is from your donor advised fund, if you have one. Yeah, and so when you're making your donations, just knowing that that's going towards so much life transformation mm -hmm. and just people right here in the Rockford community. Um, but to incentivize everyone a little bit, <laughs> if you donate $55 or more tonight, you're going to get a $5 Nettie Mercantile gift card. Um, and Nettie's is our store right next door to the Rockford Rescue Mission where you can find many handmade items by our residents right here in the Rockford Rescue Mission program. As well as we have some beautiful premiums from Clodius and Company Jewelry. Um, the first five people to give $1,000 gifts, so not pledges, but actual mm -hmm. gifts, um, will receive a silver cross necklace. The first person to get, donate a $2,500 gift will be getting a 14-karat uh, gold necklace. And the first to donate a $5,000 gift will be getting the necklace that Candace is actually wearing tonight. It's a beautiful necklace. Really They're all beautiful. Is. But. And it's actually <laughs> the one that's on your screen. It is a 14-karat gold diamond necklace. So be sure to, to get those gifts in mm -hmm. and grab one of those premiums tonight. Yes. The fact that Candace is wearing it alone makes it worth even more than that $5,000. <laughs> oh, I don't know that, about that. But that, that has to add some value. <laughs> First one to go. <laughs> we talked a little bit about uh, our sponsors, and we will throughout the evening. But really, th this telethon would not happen if it weren't for Subway, JPW. We talk with them mm -hmm. every year. I mean, as long as I've been involved in the telethon, they've been part of it as well. Yeah. Tonight's exclusive sponsor, uh, Brandon Wilhelm, president from Subway JPW, met with Crystal to tell us a little bit more about Subway and why the mission is so important to Subway JPW and their community. So I'm here tonight with Brandon Wilhelm of Subway, our exclusive sponsor for the evening. Brandon, can you tell us a little bit about who is Subway JPW? Subway JPW is my family's company and we develop and oversee Subway restaurants all over Northern Illinois and Wisconsin and Eastern Iowa. All of our stores are locally owned by Rockford area residents and surrounding communities, even though we have a national brand. And so I help support all of those franchisees and we help um, everyone try to be as successful as possible with Subway. So can you talk to us a little bit about how long you've been supporting the Rockford Rescue Mission? Rockford Rescue Mission has been um, near and dear to my heart personally ever since I was a, a little kid we used to help um, go down and either serve breakfast or you know meals on the weekends or after school or before school things like that um, and so we've been blessed in success in this area and we've always wanted to partner with you know, with the mission because you guys do such awesome things and, and God does great things through the mission in order to make our community stronger. And Rescue Mission does such an awesome job helping people get back on their feet again, give them that second chance, and, and that's what we're here for. Yeah, and Subway does that with us too because so many of our residents that graduate our life recovery program, some that you're going to meet tonight, actually have worked at Subway. So can you talk a little bit about the partnership that you have with hiring some of our people? Yeah, that's been really, really cool. And a lot of this, you know, I have to give it to our, our franchise owner, Pam Bloom, in, in the downtown Subway. She's done such a great job getting people a chance to, to get back to work, um, a chance to, to rebuild their lives a little bit. And, you know, earning that paycheck is something that, that I think is that's a that's a real source of, of pride and self-esteem for people. It's, just, it's awesome the way that um, that Subway and Pam locally have helped some of these people get back on their feet and, and get a job and be part of the you know community and like they're you know they're serving others now too. So that's awesome. Well, thank you for making tonight possible and just sharing the stories of our people with us tonight. Sure, you bet. Thanks. 
you know, it's important to acknowledge those who will be answering your phone call when you call that number, 815-966-2842. So let's go ahead and introduce you to those folks behind the phones. First, we have uh, Mike Lentini. Uh, so we want to make sure that we keep those phone lines going, and every single person we have here at the phone bank has uh, that phone up to their ear. Uh, Anna Lentini, thank you so much for donating your time this evening. Brandon Wilhelm, uh, there at the end, we go to our back row, Shar Reamer. Uh, you want to make sure you keep those phone lines going again. That number, 815-966-2842. And Warren Slaba this evening. You guys will be speaking to those folks when you call to make your gift and your donation here to the rescue mission. Well, Mark Clodius, owner of Clodius & Company, met with Crystal in his store on Malford & State to tell us about his one-of-a-kind necklaces that we have tonight for our premiums. So we are here tonight with Mark Clodius of Clodius and Company, who is donating these beautiful necklaces that you're seeing for premiums. So Mark, welcome. Thank you. Can you tell us a little bit about tonight's design and what inspired you? When um, we uh, uh, were talking about the theme and the theme was hope and how the future can open up and what happened. What happened in February and March closed all the businesses and uh, so we've reinvented hope for 2021. And it is so beautiful to have these as a premium. We are just so blessed by this. Why does Clodius and Company feel that it's so important to give back to our community? Well, I, I have to tell you, it's a small business and uh, uh, trying to make, make it in, in the business world. You depend upon y your local community and Rockford has a, a, a strong local community and we're successful and it's only because of what um, what the people who live in and around here have done to make us successful and the only right thing to do is of course is to support the community that has made you successful so yes giving back and what the the rescue mission does for our community and for the people in desperate desperate need of of what you offer is is such a good thing such a good thing we're so happy to be a part of it well you have such a heart for rockford that's just so apparent when i'm talking with you and the mission and you've been partnering with the mission for years can you talk to us a little bit about your partnership with us we opened up our store in uh, uh, 2000 in downtown Rockford and uh, and we uh, came to know people from walking in and, and being downtown when, when we were asked then would we consider contributing we we said yes and we've done it every year since and it's funny you know you do something once and then you do it again but if you've done it 20 times it starts to become kind of meaningful when you add it all up yeah, it yeah. absolutely does. And you helped make this night such a success. So thank you for partnering us. Oh, you're so again. welcome. Yes. Thank you. The company really has been a longtime supporter. Mark is one of those people who we won't see in person here. We kind of miss seeing him in the same spot every year, but we thank them for sure for their support. Tonight, we are also excited to share stories of some of the people that your donations help. We could stand here all night long and ask you to donate, but it really has more impact when you hear about the people that uh, your generosity is really going to make a difference in their lives. Uh, and one of those people is Tim, who's a men's life recovery resident who has a very very inspirational story to share. Before the mission, I came from Utah uh, to spend some time with my mom, who had just been diagnosed with lung cancer. Um, I would say it's one of the most uh, difficult times in my life, uh, because on top of that, I had just lost my grandfather, who I consider him to be my best friend. Um, so, unfortunately, um, my drinking became a problem again. I had been dealing with it for about nine years. It was just 24-7, and, you know, usually um, I would drink and then pass out. Um, but my tolerance was building up so much that I wasn't. I found the mission because I went to the hospital because of my drinking, and a nurse told me about this place, and it seemed to be the only uh, viable option for me at the time because I had just been evicted from the place that I had been renting. I decided to come here. I had to stay in crisis 
uh, for the first 12 days. Thought about leaving because um, I didn't really feel uh, this was the place for me, but something just told me to stay and trust in God. And the people here were very encouraging. Um, you know, I was pretty much in a lot of despair at the time, given the situation. She passed uh, in January, but I was able to be with her sober, got to say goodbye and uh, say everything that I had wanted to say. Um, before I walked into the uh, hospice care center, you know, I, I prayed and I asked God for strength. And, uh, you know, he provided. Um, because without that, you know, I don't think I would have been able to handle that situation without a drink. I'm starting to see myself uh, through God's eyes, so to speak. And that is the true blessing, the true gift. Um, and this whole experience, that's the big reward in the end. Well, I've had uh, experience in landscaping before. Um, I've liked it. It's uh, relaxing. Um, it's just a big plus uh, being able to work for somebody who is also a believer. We start every, almost every day with a, a little uh, reading of the Word. Just a great way to start off the day. You know, working, getting back to work, um, making a life for myself, uh, you know, feels good, especially considering I wasn't really doing much with my life. I have aspirations of helping others with addiction, um, whether that's, you know, in a rehab facility or a shelter like this, it really doesn't matter. Um, that's where my heart is. My mom she and dad, they were both, they're both recovering alcoholics. Um, so I've been around, you know, people who drink and, and have seen them uh, recover and know that it is possible. And I just hope I can be a part of that. The Rockford Rescue Mission is, um, I would say, a gem in Rockford. I know the Rockford Rescue Mission is here to help. Um, and has, you know, provided food and shelter for those in need and uh, will continue to do so and is just looking to, um, looking for ways uh, that they can help uh, more, more and more. Tim's story is just one of hundreds of stories and people that we see come through the mission every year. And the here gifts tonight are helping Tim and everyone else that is staying here at the mission. Um, and just a little bit about how your gifts are helping um, right here in Rockford is we are providing about 433 meals every day right here at Rockford Rescue Mission. And this is during 2020, during our pandemic. Um, we are sheltering on average 133 men, women, and children nightly. This is the big one. We have a Hope Clinic here on site, and we're gonna hear from them here in a little bit. But we have had 12,644 medical chiropractic appointments right here at the Rockford Rescue Mission in 2020 by our own nurse. Um, and we've had over 400 participants this year in our education and employment services, as well as our GED testing center right here at our work center. Um, and we are also rated with a four star um, rating for Charity Navigator. So you know when you give to Rockford Rescue Mission um, that your funds are being accounted for and being used in the best way that we can. It's clear by those numbers where the need is and how many people Rockford Rescue Mission impacts in their lives. And you know, maybe one of the most common things that people know about Rockford Rescue Mission is the overnight guests and people mm -hmm. who spend the night here. But there's a lot more going on as those numbers reflect. But there's also a free long-term men's and women's life recovery programs that really turn people's lives, literally turn people's lives around. Tell us a little bit about that program, Crystal. 
Yeah, so our life recovery program is just so huge and really the heart of our mission here. Because um, we have people that come into our crisis centers um, and a lot of times we're looking at why are they struggling with homelessness. And if they're struggling with addiction as their root cause of homelessness, we're really working to get them into our free long-term life recovery program. So that is our nine to 12 month live in recovery program um, that is really looking at those root causes of addiction um, and helping people walk um, in that life of recovery um, and learning to do that in a healthy way um, right here in Rockford. It seems like there's that common theme with a lot of their stories. Imagine COVID has thrown a monkey wrench into everything. Like how have things changed because of those precautions? Yeah, so addiction just nationally is just skyrocketing. Um, and so right now having those treatment like places that people can go to for recovery is just so huge um, for our community. And so again, it is a free program. We're hearing people's stories tonight um, that have been here through COVID COVID, um, really just sticking to their course of recovery um, right here at Rockford Rescue Mission. Well, you clearly, you've heard the need, the numbers reflect it, right? The mission supported by the community, uh, maybe uh, viewers like you. Uh, we did have a chance to meet up with uh, some businesses right here. We'll, we'll meet them throughout the evening. Lawn Care by Walter is one of them. Mark and Debbie Walter wanted to give a very special gift to the mission tonight. So I am here with Mark and Debbie with Lawn Care by Walter with a very special gift for the mission as well as my coworker Ted Tamita, our Director of Donor Relations. Um, we just want to start off by asking you guys, how long have you been involved with the Rockford Rescue Mission? We've been involved over 10 years with them. Um, we started out volunteering our time. Um, our children had to do service hours, so we decided that we would volunteer for the Christmas dinners. Um, once we did that, it was just overwhelming. We didn't realize what the mission did for our community, um, all the things that they have to offer for all the people that go there. You know, you have the beauty salon, you have the dental office, you have all sorts of things that I didn't realize that you had. Um, so that's how we started out with the mission. And then from there, we decided to become more of a corporate sponsor and help sponsor concerts. Mm -hmm. Um, and then started donating money to the mission. Yeah, and your son is quite the country music fan. Yes, he is. <laughs> He's a big Mo Pitney fan. <laughs> yes, yes, so you guys have so many connections to us. But looking at it from that personal and that business standpoint, why do you believe that the work that the Rockford Rescue Mission does is so important to our Rockford community and businesses like yours? Because it gives people the chance that they have done something bad in their life. Um, an opportunity to turn around and make their life better. Um, for example, you know, you can hire people from the mission once they've gone through that program. We've experienced that, and those people also need a chance. Mm -hmm. And the mission gives them that opportunity, and as a community and as a business, if we're able to bring someone into our business, that's a win-win for everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you guys have just been such an awesome longtime partner, and tonight's gift is so just important and critical to the mission, and Ted is so excited to accept this from you guys. Well, thank you so much, Mark and Debbie. We're just so appreciative of Long Care by Walter, and this gift is such a generous donation yes. uh, for those folks that we serve here in our community uh, at Rockford Rescue Mission. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I love hearing the stories and, you know, seeing the, the community and the businesses in the community really uh, offering their support to the mission. The businesses clearly will help our total when we exactly. turn the tote in a few minutes. I don't know if we ever said what our goal was. Look at these. Did we? I'm not sure we did. $115,000. That is our goal tonight. So we'll check that number in just a second. But we want to acknowledge some of the folks who have already called in this evening. And, uh, you know, we've been doing this for a long time. You've yeah. been doing it clearly longer than I have. But I don't ever remember this early in the telethon a stack this big of it's donations. It's going to continue to grow. And we will try and get to as many of these as we can. But uh, <laughs> just a few. Devin Fox up in Roscoe. Uh, four hundred fourteen dollar donation. Thank That's you for wonderful. that. Uh, Julie Adkins uh, connected to Scott's RV truck and auto repair. A thousand dollar donation. Thank you. That's going to boost our totals pretty seriously. Thank yeah. you so much for your generosity. You know, Brent Baker with uh, Byron Bank. Thank you so much for your one time donation. Five hundred dollars. You know, and the the neat thing when you when you call that number uh, there at the bottom of your screen, you're able to let the person that you're speaking to know if this is your first time 
time donating to the mission or if you have done it in years past. And we love to see that check mark that says this is your first gift to the mission. So that number on your screen you want to call, of course, you can always go online, rockfordrescuemission.org. Larry uh, from Rockford, your one-time gift of $100. Thank you so much for that. And uh, Vivian, uh, you can do a monthly pledge too, which uh, spaces it out over a year for her monthly pledge from Winnebago. Like we said, there are so many here, we couldn't physically read all of them, but... Uh, but we are going to try. Yeah, and your pledge <laughs> definitely is appreciated, even if we don't read your name. Should we see how what, I think what we these should. have added up I to I have a feeling so we're far? getting up there, yeah. I don't know if we have a drum roll, but hey. there's... Oh, oh, wow! Look at that! I was impressed with the 10. <laughs> now we're up to 14. 14,373, and we still have a little over an hour and a half to go because remember, this telethon goes until 9 o'clock, and you can help us reach that goal, $115,000, 815 966 2842 well, The Rockford Rescue Mission has its own on-site clinic right here at the mission. It was truly a year like none other that the clinic and the mission staff here, saw. A couple of minutes ago, Crystal shared some of the numbers mm -hmm. when it came to visits, clinic visits. Yeah. Um, I actually had the pleasure of meeting with two women who are work very closely, not only at the clinic, but with the clients who get services at the clinics. They talk not only about what happens in a normal year, but also how the pandemic has changed how Rockford Rescue Missions Clinic operates. So when it comes to recovery, a lot of times overall health is very important. To tell more about that, Jennifer Jacobs and Vera Williams are here. Jennifer is the Hope Clinic Supervisor and Vera is the Clinic Coordinator. Thank you so much for being here and being willing to share your stories. Jennifer, first, many people may not even know that there is a clinic on site here at the Rockford Rescue Mission. Tell me what the clinic does. What's its purpose? The purpose of the clinic is to provide um, many different aspects of their health. Um, we have eight chiropractors that come through here. We have two doctors that come through here and do, um, they do physical exams on our patients going up into recovery. Um, we have a dental hygienist. We have a dentist. We have a pharmacist that does, um, helps me do medication audits. We do vision exams. We do vital signs, blood pressure checks. Um, we give TB tests. And we take a lot of temperatures right now because of COVID. Oh, I imagine. We're doing a lot of things. There's so much happening in this hallway. It's a, it's a busy, busy place. So what is that, Vera, what, as clinic coordinator, what is your role in all of this? How, how do you help this function? To make sure that the clinic runs smoothly, be her eyes and ears for her as well. Um, I make sure the residents get seen properly for their charts for and assist with any medical assistance that she may need as well as I maintain and put all the information into the system for her. Uh, Jennifer, I think you touched on this a little bit, but how important is physical health when it comes to someone who's going through recovery? Well, you can't really focus on your recovery if you don't feel well. Um, whether you're in pain, you know what I mean, um, or um, have an upset stomach or a headache or something like that. So we really try to focus on in the clinic, not just their physical health, but their spiritual health. You know what I mean, um, so the, one of the best parts of being able to work here is be able to treat their mind, body, and spirit. We mentioned, you mentioned, things are very different, certainly over the last year, right, yes. because of COVID-19. How has that changed how you operate, Jennifer? We take staff temperatures twice a day, okay, um, every single staff member. We take temperatures for anyone who comes in the building. So whether they're a crisis guest who wants to come in for the night, they have to go through the clinic first and they have to be approved. If there's any symptoms that we think are related to COVID, we'll send them to get tested. Um, if it's a volunteer who wants to come in and volunteer, we do the same thing. We do a health screening on them. If it is someone who has been out sick for a while or gone on vacation or something, they have to go through the clinic and have a health screening. Um, we provide sanitation stations throughout the building. We provide masks for everybody. We have them right when you walk in the door. We make sure that everybody has some. And Vera, we touched on this a little bit. The number of appointments that you've had to coordinate here has just skyrocketed over the last year, right? How have the numbers changed? Normal year, what, you roughly have 4,000 or so, is that right? Yes. And, and where are you now? now? We have 12,000. So three times as many clinic appointments here. Yes. And with all of the people who are in and out of this building, you really have not had many cases. It seems like what all these things in place are doing what they're supposed to be doing, right? When it comes to keeping cases down, where are your numbers? 
Right now we have 14. We have 14 cases. Yep. So throughout the last several months, there have been 14? Yes. 14. Total. Since the pandemic yes, started, 14. we've only had 14 cases. 12 were staff and two were guests. And two of the staff members yep, right here. Yep. sitting right here. And this is kind of the world we're in now. How were you, how did you feel? How were your symptoms? I mean, were, did, you, did you struggle? Was I had every symptom except for a fever. And I still can't taste or smell anything. And it's been three months. So That seems to be the one, the, the symptom that's sticking around with everybody. Vera, what about you? I had more of the mouth symptoms, which I lost my smell, which I did gain that back. But every now and then, I may feel a little fatigue. Well, when you think of those numbers and you think of how many people are here on a night or how many people are in and out of that building, it's pretty remarkable that clearly whatever's happening with the safety precautions here in the clinic is working throughout the whole building and with staff and residents and visitors. We're trying. Yes. We're trying. I'm doing our best. Well, it's doing fantastic. Vera and Jennifer, thank you so much for sharing what the clinic does with us. Thank you. Thank you. You know, that is absolutely amazing. I mean, you guys have done a wonderful job at just following those procedures to a T to make sure that everybody here, not only staff, but also the guests that come in, uh, stay safe during the pandemic. Yeah, it's definitely changed up how we are providing like services, but it mm -hmm. hasn't changed the fact that we are providing services. We've been working very closely with our health department and the city and making sure that we're just keeping everyone safe. And that's just gone into this evening as well, just making sure that we Absolutely. are really just make, taking care of just all of our guests and our residents and our staff and um, just you, even you guys tonight. Here yeah, every that. everybody here, you guys have been uh, absolutely wonderful with, with everything that you need to do to make sure that each and everyone uh, and people who come in are staying safe tonight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one of our favorite people that we have come in, um, we are actually going to get to see a video of them right now, is two men in a <laughs> truck. Um, they have been just awesome donors and supporters and just a, a business that really just cares about the mission. Mm -hmm. um, and they're here to tell us a little bit more about why they love Rockford Rescue Mission. <laughs> Two Men in a Truck's motto is, uh, one of our core values is to give back. So we love partnering with the Rockford Rescue Mission because of all the work that they do in the community. We love that they provide job and skills training in the work center. We think that's really important. We also help out at the thrift store. We uh, kind of accept donations. One of the things that we love, again, so much about the Rockford Rescue Mission is they really work to improve the community. That's really important to us as one of our other core values and mottos is moving people forward. So the two organizations mesh really well. So we couldn't do the work that we do without our community. And I'm so excited for one of our local businesses, Superior Joining Technologies. It's going to share about how their organization um, is helping support the day-to-day -day operations here at the Rockford Rescue Mission. So I'm here with Tom and Teresa from Superior Joining Technologies with a very special gift to the Rockford Rescue Mission, a $2,500 donation. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Do you want to tell us a little bit about why this donation is just so personally important to you? Superior Joining Technologies likes to support our community. We really feel blessed and that we're a part of the community and we want to support the Rockford Rescue Mission. How long have you guys been supporting the Rockford Rescue Mission? Well, Tom and I have supported the Rockford Rescue Mission since before we were even married. That's been a few days. Many, many years. And then when we started the business over 20 years ago, we started to um, give to the Rescue Mission also as part of our community support. Awesome. And you do it with the help of all your employees? Yes. And what other personal experiences have you had with the Rockford Rescue Mission? Well, our business and um, personally, we've done different volunteering in the community. Wonderful. Well, thank you guys so much for this awesome gift tonight. We couldn't do it without you. Thank you. Awesome. Welcome to An Evening for Hope a telethon benefiting Rockford Rescue Mission. An Evening for Hope is brought to you commercial free thanks to our exclusive sponsor, Subway. Good evening, I'm Eric Wilson. I'm Candace King. And I'm Crystal Calhoun, Marketing and Communications Director here at the Rockford Rescue Mission.
You know, it has been just a little while before we were able to check up on an updated total. We had 14,373, I think it was. You the are the numbers girl. You well, good number. Right? There we go. Hey, look 14, at that. That was right on the money too, Candace. <laughs> you know, those are important numbers to remember. We want to check to see how that number has changed within the last 10, 15 minutes. Wow. It's gone up. $3, that is a big jump. That is a big yeah, jump. Awesome. Thank you, guys. 17363 so far. We've got another hour and a half to go. Remember, our goal tonight is $115,000 for the 23rd annual and evening for Hope mm -hmm. Telethon. And it's just so important this year because I was sharing a little bit beforehand, we have not actually had an official fundraiser at Rockford Rescue Mission in a whole year. So since our last telethon, we have not had one of our official fundraisers. So tonight we're just really just counting on our community just to, to come together and just help us raise these funds to help continue supporting men and women and children right here in our community. And speaking of those funds, over the 23 years of the telethon, we're talking more than $2 million. Yeah. This is a, a big impact and it doesn't just happen. Right. It, it mm -hmm. takes you picking up the phone or heading online and making a donation. Uh, throughout the evening, we'll hear, again, it's easy for us to say, please donate, here's the numbers, but to really hear the stories of the people whose lives are impacted and transformed by the donation that you make, is pretty impressive and it's inspirational and we'll hear some more of those stories in this half hour. Yeah, so this year's focus of the telethon is really on our comprehensive care that we've been able to offer during COVID to those who are recovering from um, addiction and destructive lifestyle behaviors and finding hope and healing right here at the Rockford Rescue Mission. So last half hour, we talked a little bit about our life recovery program and what that is, um, as well as a glimpse into the amazing medical care that mm -hmm. people are receiving right here at the mission in our Hope Clinic. Um, and so right now, we're just so excited to continue to share stories of life transformation um, and want to give a very special thank you to our gift and kind partners, Clodius and Company Jewelry, as well as Nettie's Mercantile, a Rockford Rescue Mission Retail Enterprise, and our exclusive sponsor for the evening, Subway. Um, tonight is just so special because of all the involvement that we're having. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, this year's telethon is unlike any year's telethon that we've ever done before. You know, Eric and Crystal uh, have been working for weeks, weeks, months. <laughs> That's what it yes. has been, preparing for tonight uh, safely behind the scenes with all the interviews that you will see tonight of our guests here. Social distancing measures and COVID precautions have been taken all throughout the night tonight and through the footage that you see here this evening. Yeah, and so tonight when you are making your donations and your gifts, we wanna just give you a little bit of extra incentive just to pick up that phone and call and make that gift. And so if you make a gift of $55 or more tonight, you're gonna get a $5 Nettie's Mercantile gift card. And that is our Rockford Rescue Mission um, retail enterprise that is right next door to the mission. Um, has some amazing coffee and food as well as a one of a kind gift items made by our life recovery program um, residents in our um, art therapy program. We also have some beautiful necklaces from Clodius and Company Jewelry. So the first five people who give a $1,000 gift get the silver cross necklace. Um, I believe we only have four of those left. Um, and then the first person to give a $2,500 gift gets a 14 karat gold necklace. And the first person to give a $5,000 gift gets the necklace that's on the screen right now. It's a gold necklace with diamonds on it. And actually Candace is wearing that necklace tonight so you can check it out on her. This, is, this The go. diamonds are so sparkly and blue. I, I it's added feel. to your natural radiance, Candace. <laughs> There's a lot of diamonds special. on that one too. There's there is. four diamonds, yeah. and we were we were looking at it. We we're like, that is beautiful. It is a beautiful necklace, and it has. You might be able to see. I don't know if I turn a little bit this way. It, it has yeah, hope, sparkly, uh, hope down the center, which is what you guys provide to yeah. so many people. Now we have to real fast tell you how you can make that donation uh, here tonight. The number that you see on your screen: eight one five nine six six two eight four two. You can also donate online: rockfordrescuemission.org. You know, it's important to stress that the mission does not receive any sort of HUD funding. So everything that comes in to the mission comes from you guys at home. And if you think, oh, I don't, you know, can we only donate 10 or $20? That is a 10 or $20 that goes a long way. So keep that in mind. And another great way to donate to the mission and to the telethon tonight is from your donor advised fund. Um, let's go ahead and introduce some of those people that you will be speaking to tonight when you call We've that been number. Very busy since really since even before we officially it, started. The phones yeah. were ringing, yeah, absolutely. Before uh, we even started, as you mentioned, Eric, we're going to go down to our front row. We have uh, Michael Lentini. 
Uh, they are busy. In fact, we've got five people answering the phone this evening, and I don't think they've had a break. No, they, no. <laughs> they've been very busy. One thing you will notice about, we, we talked a little bit about this being different, is uh -huh. that our phone bank is smaller, but yeah. that, that means more work for them. They're going to be a lot and more busy not complaining, tonight. not at Absolutely. all. No, not at all. we got to go to Anna Lentini. She is there in the middle front. Uh, Brandon Wilhelm on the uh, bottom front right, I should say. We're going to go to our back row now. We have Shar Reamer, uh, who is busy answering the phone call and warn Slaba tonight. So again, that number, 815 Nine six six two eight four two. So Rockford Rescue Mission is 100% funded by our businesses, our churches, our organizations, mm -hmm. um, and just members in our community like you. Um, and I just want to take a special moment just to thank a business who um, gave us a $1,000 donation um, to tonight's telethon, Scott's RV Truck and Auto Repair Incorporated. Um, they're located on American Road, kind of there between um, Sandy Hollow and Alpine, um, that just d d blessing us this evening mm -hmm. with this donation, and we could not do it without them. And we're just going to show you one more video right now of a gentleman who is right in our program um, and receiving help at the Rockford Rescue Mission, who your donation tonight is going to be helping people like him. Life like before you came to Rockford Rescue Mission, what was that moment that you just hit that despair? Just uh, living a life of drugs and alcohol. I spent pretty much all of my 20s in prison. I actually came here from jail. Um, on drug court probation. I was scared to come here, honestly. Um, I didn't know what to expect, and um, since coming here, like, my life has already started to change. Everybody here is so nice and just very good people, and they embraced me with love and actually teaching me how to love others as well. My hope for my future is remain sober and just continue my life with God leading the way and um, eventually to help other people like me and probably going back to prisons to give hope to people to let them know there's a new another way to live. That's awesome. So like doing pr prison mis ministry? Mm -hmm. That's remarkable. Uh, what was it like being here in the middle of a pandemic? It was kind of crazy. Um, some restrictions and rules, not being able to leave and see my family but they provided zoom calls and zoom visits and phone calls regularly so that's helped out a lot so how would you say your relationship with the other men and women in the program has grown through this pandemic uh, i think it's grown a lot pretty much take care of each other look out for each other and just everybody's so caring mm -hmm. so if somebody is watching this tonight and is living a life in addiction and living that life of despair, what would you say to get you to come here and get that help? I just want them to know it's a really good place and um, it could literally change anybody's life if it could change mine. After all the suffering and heartache and stuff I've been through, it's just becoming a whole other person and it's a very good place to be. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Mike. You're welcome. Okay. Mike's story is not unique, and his situation, individual situations obviously are different, but there's really, there's a common theme when it comes to recovery, and that happens to be a, a strong faith-based recovery program, and that's really what Rockford Rescue Mission is known for. You will, you will hear that theme in the interviews that uh, we, from the people that you will meet, um, and that's really an important part of overcoming some of the struggles and many of those struggles the obstacles will be too large if not for a that strong faith and b your help tonight um, speaking of faith you know there obviously it, it's a, a central focus of the programs here at rockford rescue mission no one knows that better than pastor steve and uh, another tim that we have a chance to talk with from the men's life Rec recovery group let's hear their story so I am here with two of my very dear friends, Pastor Steve, as well as Tim, a resident in our Life Recovery Program. How are you guys tonight? We're great. Fine, thank you. Awesome. Well, I'm excited to kind of just pick your brains and dig in and talk to you. It's Pastor Steve about your role here and Tim, your experience here. Um, Pastor Steve, why don't you start us off with talking about um, what is your role here at the Rockford Rescue Mission and what does it mean to you? 
Well, I've been a chaplain for three whole weeks now, but it's been just an amazing experience to this point. Uh, what I guess has really triggered me is the passion that these staff have for everyone that walks into these four walls. And there's many walls besides four, but within this confine, uh, the concern that they have for them, the, the, what they pour into them. So blessed and so thankful that the Rockford Rescue Mission has accepted me as a chaplain. I'm hoping that uh, as my life grows, that we'll see many more people come to Christ and that people will truly go through recovery. And your role is just such a critical one here at the Rockford Rescue Mission because we are a faith-based recovery and many residents like Tim didn't know Christ in the way that he does today without that position of chaplain and the staff pouring in. And so, Tim, you were sharing a little bit with me before about how when you came here, you came through the court system um, and you didn't really have that relationship with Christ. So can you tell me about what your outlook on faith was like before coming to Rockford Rescue Mission? Sure. Uh, before coming to the Rockford Rescue Mission, um, I believed in God, but nothing like I do today. Um, I was in a, I was in a recovery home before. Um, wasn't faith based. Um, coming to the Rockford Rescue Mission, being faith based is completely different from not being faith based. Having God in my recovery is everything um, the prayer the togetherness everything about the rockford rescue mission with being faith-based is terrific we're so happy that you're here and just in the three months that you've been here just seeing how you've grown and how like you've even just had the other men come around you and we, we've been joking about Pastor Tim that you're you're helping others grow through how the staff and people here have helped you grow. Now Pastor Steve, you get the pleasure of working with all of our men and women in our recovery program and our guests in our crisis centers. Why do you think that faith is so crucial to recovery? Well, I can't imagine life without church and my faith. Church has uh, been my family. It's been where I get encouraged. It's where I get fed. And that relationship has helped me through life in so many ways. And I can't think of a better place for someone going through recovery than having a church that they could go to that is their family. That, that's where they find peace. That's where they find love. That's where they find hope and encouragement. And um, I just uh, think that the basics, uh, these are the basics in life that people are looking for. And that will carry them beyond what they learn here and carry it into a life where they get to actually live it out on a day-to-day -day basis, week-to-week -week basis, year-to-year -year basis. We hopefully uh, think of them that this life is going to be a great success for them. And it's all because of Christ and what he has done for us and they would have an abundant life through Christ. Yeah. Well, thank you guys both for sharing your hearts and your role here with us tonight. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Again, it's clear how important being a faith-based program is. You heard yeah. Tim say that he was in a program that was not faith-based, mm -hmm. didn't work for him, and now he's had success in the program here at Rockford Rescue Mission, and that faith has made all the difference. On the wall right over there, it says, with God, all things are possible. And you have that, you heard him say, you know, you have that abundance of life, you know, with, with that. So I, it's, it's wonderful and very, very inspiring to hear the stories and how uh, the guests here are able to recover and, you know, go back out into the community. So, and they are testament to that model. Exactly, and everything that the mission does. And, you know, another uh, big thank you goes out to the businesses in the community for supporting tonight's telethon. We've already heard from a lot of them. You may recognize the name Coyle Kiley, local mm -hmm. insurance group. They are very <laughs> active in community events all over the yes. Rockford area. Here is uh, one of their members, Jeffrey Beto, with a special message. My name is Jeffrey Beto with Coyle Kiley Insurance Agency. As we all know, 2020 was an exceptionally challenging year. Throughout the pandemic, the mission demonstrated dedication and creativity to ensure continued service to the greater Rockford area. We are grateful for these efforts and look forward to supporting this great organization moving forward in the years to come. 
We hope that you will share in this unique opportunity to support them with your generosity. Thank you and God bless. Awesome. So now we want to give you guys an update about where we are. But first, we want to talk about these necklaces that we have. Um, and we only have one silver necklace left for a $1,000 gift. But Mark Clodius has let us know that if that $5,000 gold cross necklace with diamonds went tonight, that he was going to donate another one. He always surprises us. So there is actually two necklaces still left. We have the silver cross necklace for $1,000 as well as the gold cross necklace um, with the four diamonds for $5,000. So I know we can get one more of those $5,000 gifts um, that we just truly need um, tonight. And just want to share a little bit of some of the donations who have come in um, so far tonight. We have Greg um, and Jeanne. They have received one of the silver cross necklaces. Thank you. And a gold cross necklace to Ann Dittmar. Thank you, Ann. We have William and Kathleen Carlson who received a silver cross necklace. Thank you. And the gold cross with diamonds to Carlos Bengoa. Awesome. And then we have a special donation here from Greg and, um, oh, I already had read that one. We have Greg Hackbarth, um, who has also given a donation tonight. Thank you so much. And one special donation that I want to run through really, really quickly. Uh, some close friends of mine uh, lost their mother right about three weeks ago, almost, well, almost a month ago, the Tillman family. Uh, today actually would have been Cora Tillman's 84th birthday. Um, and so in honor of her 84th birthday, the Tillmans have donated. $84 to rescue mission tonight. So, um, so special. So a special donation anyway, but uh, Reggie and Danita and Logan and Bo personally, uh, thank you so much. This had to be a tough day for you, but uh, it's so great that you turned your pain and your loss to something positive for the community. So thank you guys. Love you guys. Yeah. And moms are just so special. And we have a life recovery resident with us um, who is in our program, who we're going to hear her story. Um, and she is just she is just going to share a story about um, how she's just fought to get um, her kids back and back in um, their life. So we're going to hear um, from Janae. Probably before I came here, I kind of, my first go-to eventually was alcohol. So that was my first drug of choice. Um, eventually led to homelessness and um, 2014 I conceived my um, first child um, and that was my first toxic relationship um, so I was just basically continually falling into a pattern of just falling into that trap and um, drugs was always involved me and my children kind of went from person to person, place to place kind of a thing. And um, I just paid rent where I was, whoever I was staying with. So I was basically a roommate for a while with a few people and it just, it didn't work out. It wasn't, you know, what I felt like my children deserved. What led me to come in here was another um, abusive, toxic situation, not with the same man, but um, someone I met through a friend. And this time, this I showed up to the door, I didn't, I didn't call. I didn't ask like I've been trying to do, you know. Um, I just came and that was God because this time they were able to take me in, you know. And so um, that was my first time staying in the mission. One of the reasons why I couldn't work the steps yet was because I wasn't patient, you know. I wanted everything now. I had to start over. And so it really helps out to come to a place where you don't have to worry about toiletry or how you're going to eat um, and if you want further help as far as spiritually it helps out when you come to a place that's prepared you know that just have all those blessings so you can utilize whatever's there that's already ready for you <clears throat> so not only the people are coming to work ready to work but that's one less thing that they have to worry about you know they don't have to worry about how we're going to get this or that you could just ask and <laughs> we're taken care of but the one thing that I could say um, to people, if they will take my advice, um, the Rockford Rescue Mission is here to help and it's here to restore lives. And um, if ever it's a time where you feel yourself, if someone feels themselves going back to something that they don't need to, or um, just having a problem with something and 
probably need someone to call. They can give you great wisdom and one thing I can say is for the most part I know we all are adults and we're grown you know or even if we're children and we're having some troubled times whatever the case all age ranges they're here to help. I could just say that right now I just think that whatever God has assigned for me for that day the present day for that present opportunity he shows out and I just apply what I've um, been instilled in me in here. So first start because I felt peace in that. It was hard, it was scary. I'm still scared sometimes, you know. But I get through it just trusting and obeying. I could finally trust. I came here, I had no trust outside these walls. When I came here the first day, I didn't have any trust inside these walls. I didn't trust myself, you know. I didn't trust God. So when I got here, I had to be reintroduced to God's trust and His love. And I had a lot of hugs, <laughs> you know, from these people I didn't know up here, you know, but it's gotten me through. So God, He's a provider. Boy, if those stories don't bring you close to tears, how it's clear how uh, emotional those transformations are for the people who are served here at Rockford Rescue Mission. It it's really, unbelievable. It really is. We have this running joke here at the mission that we might as well just have Kleenex in every room because we are criers here. Um, and it's just so awesome to see how God's moving in our residents' hearts and our guests' hearts and our, our volunteers and our staff too. And I just know these stories are moving in your guys' hearts tonight too. So we're just going to take a quick second um, and just check our total for the evening and see where we're at. Last time it was a big jump. Let's see where we go this time. Oh! oh that is a huge That is job. huge. We're not even halfway done. Absolutely huge. Thank you guys. This night is not possible without you all. And just want to give one more special thank you to Carlos Bengoa. Um, he gave a $10,000 gift. So I know that total is just, just made possible by you guys. And I had heard as well that that second $5,000 cross is already gone. So we have one necklace left. We have the $1,000 silver cross necklace that is left tonight. We talked about the beginning of the telethon, how quickly those incentives normally go. Yes. I don't think any of us expected that they would go this quickly. No, I think that this is a record making year and I think we just made the record for how quick the necklaces went. So thank you all. And now we want to introduce you to a life recovery resident, Don, um, who you might have seen on a telethon before, um, but he is here to tell you about his second time around here at Rockford Rescue Mission. Well, I came here in May of 2017, okay. um, and I completed the program, graduated. I stayed in transition for about four months and then moved back in with the wife, and things just didn't work out. I kind of knew they weren't going to, and then I made some exceptions to some boundaries, and one thing led to another, and I started to drink again, uh, not real heavily, but... I knew where it was going to go, so. Is the drinking what brought you here the first time? Yes. Like 2017? Well, drinking, yeah. Like I was drinking a liter of vodka a day, if not more, every day. I mean, normal person, the amount I was drinking in a day would kill a normal person. I was literally, I was homeless. I was staying with a friend, sleeping on his floor. Finally, I just said, that's it, enough's enough. I know where I need to go, you know, because I've been here before. So why... Why come back? Why did you want to come back to this place? Because it's this, this a good place. I mean, the people here, I mean, they're just good God-fearing people. And, and when I say that, you know, it's, they're afraid not to be with God, not to walk with God. Um, you know, just the things he does in our lives, it's amazing. What kind of things has he done for you in the last few months that you've been here? Uh, well, <laughs> he's just my attitude. My whole attitude's changed. Um, you know, I'm willing to talk with people before I would just go off to myself. You know, and he's taught me to, to uh, reach out for him for help, you know, and get into scripture, you know, the word of God. It's just awesome. You know, I mean, there's people out there that pray for us that we don't even know. You know, we know that people are praying for us because we're told that, but we don't know them. You know, and it's just amazing what people are willing to do. You know, that's really great. And, you know, anybody that's struggling with alcohol or drugs, this would be the place to come. You know, I, I highly recommend it. 
So that is just one story of many who we have here at the Rockford Rescue Mission. We have an average of 133 men, women, and children who are staying here nightly. Um, and those stays and the, their food are made possible through donations like yours. Um, and we want to talk a little bit about a business. We're going to check in with Rockford Mutual Insurance, um, who gave a gift, who just made um, tonight just possible, um, and just the continued service that we have here at Rockford Rescue Mission. Good evening, I'm Lisa Ayrton, Director of Human Resources for Rockford Mutual Insurance Company. For many years, our associates have volunteered at the kitchen and also conducted fundraising for the rescue mission. We believe that the Rockford Rescue Mission provides wonderful and necessary services to our community and we're proud to be a small part of that. From all of us here at Rockford Mutual, thank you, have a wonderful evening, and God bless. Thank you, Rockford Mutual. We just have had so many businesses just come behind us for this telethon tonight. Um, so I want to introduce Brooke with Helm Service for another contribution to our telethon. I was pretty heavy in my addiction. I got into some harder drugs. It wasn't just drinking and So I am here with Brooke from Helm Service with a very special gift to the Rockford Rescue Mission, as well as my coworker, Ted Tamita. He is our Director of Donor Relations here to accept the check today. Um, but first, we want to talk a little bit to Brooke and just find out how long has Helm been supporting the Rockford Rescue Mission? It's been about, I would say, 10 to 15 years that we've had the privilege to serve the rescue mission in multiple ways, whether it's our HVAC plumbing and electrical services or donations like this that help the rescue mission and all the causes that they serve. And that is so amazing. What initially got you guys plugged in with the mission? The Helm Service has a, a large amount of employees and it's actually been multiple employees whether they've been a part of tours at the mission or they've actually donated their time. Um, we provide services actually through Helm Service for the mission. Um, we, we truly appreciate giving back to our customers in need. So Brooke, can you tell us a little bit about why the mission's work is so meaningful to Helm Service? Absolutely. First off, kudos to you guys for all that you do. If you. if you haven't checked out their website, please do so. The amount of work that they do, whether it's giving shelter to those in need or feeding those in need, um, it's, it's really moving for us to see that. And with home service, it's it's great to know that we are so blessed with the amount of customers that we serve and being able to give back in various ways such as this, it, it's a true honor for, for us. So thank you so much for this amazing gift. Ted will be happy to accept it on behalf of the Rockford Rescue Mission. Brooke, thank you so much and Helm Service for this wonderful mm -hmm. gift to the mission. We just thank you so much for your generosity. It's our pleasure. Thank you guys for all that you do. God bless. Welcome to an Evening for Hope, a telethon benefiting Rockford Rescue Mission. An Evening for Hope is brought to you commercial free thanks to our exclusive sponsor, Subway. Good evening, I'm Eric Wilson. I'm Candace King. And I'm Crystal Calhoun, Marketing and Communications Director here at the Rockford Rescue Mission. We are in our second hour here of an Evening for Hope telethon, and we have to stop for a second and look at how much we have uh, raised so far just within this last hour because the numbers, they keep going up. Our goal tonight, $115,000. We're already halfway there. 56571 That was our last check-in. Mm -hmm. Seventy-five. Whoa! Oh, yeah. $526. That is wonderful. Simple math, and we don't want to <laughs> jinx that pace, but right. if we keep that pace up, we will blow away that $115,000 goal. I think so. We've got a whole another hour to go, and a lot of great stories to hear uh, for us this evening. Welcome to the Rockford Rescue Mission's 23rd annual Evening for Hope Telethon uh, benefiting the Rockford Rescue Mission. Uh, celebrating 50, the 57th Seven. yeah, anniversary this year and as I mentioned before the 23rd annual telethon and you know so far the telethons have raised over two million dollars. Yeah these nights are so important to the Rockford Rescue Mission. So I was sharing before we have not had an official fundraiser since our last telethon 
last year. And so we just continue to serve people through this pandemic. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that later and how many people we have staying right here at the mission. But your donation tonight makes that possible. Yeah. And, you know, tonight you're going to hear uh, many, many stories about how uh, the gifts restore hope and change the lives for men, women and children here not only in the Rockford area, but also throughout the community. Yeah, and so the focus of this year's telethon is really on the mission's comprehensive care during COVID-19 to help those who are recovering from addiction and destructive life behaviors find that hope and that healing. And so this half hour, we're gonna really look at how the Rockford Rescue Mission is impacting the community through our work center, um, as well as amazing stories of transformation um, that's just gonna continue throughout this evening. But tonight would not be possible if it was not for our exclusive sponsor, Subway, as well as our gift and kind partners of Clodius and Company Jewelry, um, as well as Nettie's Mercantile, a Rockford Rescue Mission enterprise. Uh, so thank you for making tonight so special. You may have already noticed that Telethon is a little bit different yep. this year than in years past. Mm -hmm. Our phone bank is a little bit smaller, but uh, really a lot of people have been working behind the scenes. Crystal, you and I have done some of these, normally the people that we would be seeing in person here at Telethon. Mm -hmm. yes trying to limit the number of people who are here. So we did those recorded. So we will get to meet some of those people as well. Also, anyone who is here, we went through COVID precautions. Yes, Everyone, yeah. we answered the standard questions. I had temperatures taken. So people in here have been screened um, and we're taking precautions. And really, as we learned when we, when we heard from uh, the clinic ladies mm -hmm. is that the precautions here are really working. They really there are. There limited number of cases yes, here since, in the rescue mission. Since March, we've only had 12 cases, most of which have been staff. Um, no guests, no residents have really been affected by it here at the mission. So we just know that God is covering us and pray that's continuing into this evening. Um, and I want to just talk about one of those videos that uh, we did um, and meet Brandon Wilhelm. He is the president of Subway JPW. Um, and I met up with him right here in Rockford in one of his stores. Um, and they are tonight's exclusive sponsor that's making this evening possible. Um, so let's check out and see what Brandon has to say. So I'm here tonight with Brandon Wilhelm of Subway, our exclusive sponsor for the evening. Brandon, can you tell us a little bit about who is Subway JPW? Subway JPW is my family's company and we develop and oversee Subway restaurants all over Northern Illinois and Wisconsin and Eastern Iowa. All of our stores are locally owned by Rockford area residents and surrounding communities even though we have a national brand. And so I help support all of those franchisees and we help um, everyone try to be as successful as possible with Subway. So can you talk to us a little bit about how long you've been supporting the Rockford Rescue Mission? Rockford Rescue Mission has been um, near and dear to my heart personally ever since I was a, a little kid. We used to help um, go down and either serve breakfast or you know meals on the weekends or after school or before school, things like that. Um, and so we've been blessed in success in this area and we've always wanted to partner with you know with the mission because you guys do such awesome things and and god does great things through the mission in order to make our community stronger and rescue mission does such an awesome job helping people get back on their feet again give them that second chance and and that's what we're here for yeah and subway does that with us too because so many of our residents that graduate our life recovery program, some that you're gonna to meet tonight, actually have worked at Subway. So can you talk a little bit about the partnership that you have with hiring some of our people? Yeah, that's been really, really cool. And a lot of this, you know, I have to give it to our, our franchise owner, Pam Bloom in, in the downtown Subway. She's done such a great job getting people a chance to, to get back to work, um, a chance to, to rebuild their lives a little bit. And, you know, earning that paycheck is something that, that I think is that's a that's a real source of, of pride and self-esteem for people. It's, just, it's awesome the way that um, that Subway and Pam locally have helped some of these people get back on their feet and, and get a job and be part of the you know community and like they're you know they're serving others now too. So that's awesome. Well, thank you for making tonight possible and just sharing the stories of our people with us tonight. Sure, you bet. Thanks. And if Brandon looks familiar, you may have seen him earlier in our first hour working the phone bank. So not only are he and Subway JPW longtime supporters uh, financially as being sponsors, he We're devotes his time as well by mm -hmm. being here. Volunteering their time. And we'll kind of have a changing of the guard with the phone bank, and you'll meet them in just a little bit. But we want to check that number once again because I think it's probably gone up. Can right? we handle it? I think so. So 75,000. That's the last one. And 26. That was our number. 78,000. Hey, there you go. So. And there, there are applause. a lot of people who are responsible for that. We just want to read a couple very quickly. Yes. 
um, for time. We'd love to read all of them. Um, we mentioned our incentives, right? And we had one gold necklace with the diamonds left. Um, that's gone, thanks to Perry and Don Thunberg and their $5,000 pledge or donation. So thank you, Perry and Don Thunberg. Also, Gordon Eggers, $150 donation. Gordon, thank you so much for your pledge. And Dwight Samuelson, $100 for tonight's telethon. Thank you for your generosity. Yes, and of course, we have to say a big thank you to Amy and Nancy from Belvedere for their one-time donation of $110. And Chris Larson from Rockford uh, for your donation of $25. Every little bit helps, guys. That number on the bottom of your screen, 815-966-2842. We want to keep our phone ringing and going and it's been doing that this evening phone has been busy the whole time yeah. partly mm -hmm. because of stories from people like the person you're about to meet next here is jeff zimmerman as he tells you how the rescue mission has changed his life i hurt my back in uh, 2003 and it went about eight years and uh, my doctor just kept giving me the pain pills you know and then uh pretty soon um, pain pills uh, you take one you need another one you need more and more and more and he would give me X amount, and then I would go and find people to, to, to buy the rest. And then when I couldn't find them or I couldn't afford them, uh, I switched to methamphetamine. And uh, it was cheaper, you know, and uh, you don't realize what you, how you are perceived by others. You think everything's fine, but, you know, uh, everything wasn't fine. So in the time that you've been here at the Rocket Rescue Mission, what have you noticed that's changed about your life? I have hope. Uh, for a long time, I didn't, I didn't have hope. I have a, a relationship with my son now. You know, I call and talk to him on the phone, and that's a, a first start, you know, and, and he's happy for me to, to, um, to get cleaned up. We started a, I started a Genesis process, and I uh, got like... Um, I'm in chapter or process seven. About to, I'm about to complete the program. So after that, I'll go into uh, their transitional living. You know, they'll keep drug testing, and and there's people to talk to. And you know, I'm not the first one that's ever, you know, had a substance abuse problem. You know, that's going through the the program, so they know to how to talk. You know, and and uh, what I need before I even need it, they see things. I, I wish people could really see what I see and, and uh, understand that, that uh, they really do take, this is a good organization to donate your money or you know, clothing, food, your time. You know, it's not just about money, so. Oh, I tell you what, those stories, you know, really kind of get to you when you hear the, uh, just the hope that it gives a lot of the uh, guests that, that are here at the Rockford Rescue Mission. And I mentioned earlier, we had a changing of the guard this last hour for uh, those who will be calling that number, 815-966-2842, to make your gift tonight for the telethon. We want to introduce you to them, so we're going to do that right now. So a big thank you to uh, Ellen Nelson for sharing her time. You need her phone to ring, so we want to get this last hour here remember our goal $115,000 Renee Evans thank you so much she's busy here this evening Tim Clausen there at the bottom right oh nope and Dittmar there we go <laughs> they got to change it a little bit uh, I have a feeling that Tim Clausen might be at the back there all right there you go and Ted Tomita he's waving his uh a uh, little wand there. I think he might have had a good donation come in and a good gift here. So remember, 815-966-2842. And you're probably going to see Sherry Pitney kind of walking in between there with the phone booth. She's actually She's right there right, right now. now. <laughs> <laughs> Taking those pledges and those donations. You know, she has been at serving here at the mission 38 years. Yes, That's yes. Amazing. She <laughs> has been, just have a heart for the mission. And um, Ted is a voice that a lot of people might know. He's mm -hmm. our director of donor relations. So you get to see his face tonight. Night too. That's amazing. Yeah. That's wonderful. <laughs> so I want to share with you a very special story from a beautiful lady that is here in our life recovery program. Um, who's going to share a little bit more about um, how God led her here and how God is working through her life right here at the Rockford Rescue Mission. So Paula, thanks for coming and talking with me tonight. Um, can you just start with just telling me a little bit about 
your story and um, what brought you to the Rockford Rescue Mission? What was that moment that was your despair? I was homeless, I was hopeless, and I was brokenhearted. Yeah, so how has your life changed since coming to Rockford Rescue Mission? Mm. It's been on up and up. <laughs> it took me a while to be accepted to the program. It took six months and I patiently waited. And now that I'm here, I'm, I've never had sisters before and now I have 10. Yeah. So um, you were looking at coming to the life recovery program. Um, what part of your life needed recovery? Me. You. What was keeping you trapped? past hurt and burdens and pain, which I have been taught to give it to God. Um, it's more freeing. And even though I'm going to cry, it's okay. even though um, I'm still broken, he's mending me. And that's the beautiful thing is we are all are broken. We all have that story. And just having that courage to share that with us tonight, I thank you for that. So how can people, hearing your story and getting to know you tonight, how can they be praying for you? They can pray for me by giving me, praying for strength when I'm weak, to pray for willingness when I feel trapped, and to just wish that God will lead me on a beautiful, wonderful journey. Awesome. Well, Paula, thank you for sharing your heart and your story with us tonight and just spending some time with us. Thank you. I love the stories. The stories really make the difference. Yeah, they do. We, we could say all day long, mm -hmm. please donate. But when you see an emotional story like that, um, yeah. it really makes a difference and hopefully inspires you to give. We've mentioned this briefly about the Works mm -hmm. Center here yep. at Rockford Rescue Mission. It's a really important program that the Rescue Mission has. Um, it has education, job training mm -hmm. for mission program graduates because obviously the goal is to get them back, back into the real world yep. and working and be able to support themselves. Um, shelter guests and individuals in our community who need to help with their employment opportunities, so not just clients here and guests at the rescue mission, but it is open to the community to help with employment. Let's learn a little bit more about the program from the program's director and someone who's found success using its services. Joining me now, a couple of people who are here to talk a little bit more about the Works Center at the Rockford Rescue Mission. Teresa Reverts is the Director of Support Services, and Tiara McGee is uh, in the Women's Life Transition Program right now. Uh, Teresa, I want to start with you. Can you tell us a little bit about the Works Center. What is it? What does it do? The Works Center is an education and a career building program that Rockford Rescue Mission offers to all of the people that are here in our recovery program as well as the crisis department. Generally, without COVID, we would open our doors to community, but it'll be a while yet before we can let our friends back in. So. And you're talking um, like skills for getting a job, right? I mean, it's in the title, Absolutely. right? Works Center. Absolutely. We focus on career building instead of just getting that Band-Aid job. We help people get coordinated with the agencies in town that will provide them with technical training if they choose not to go back to school or on a path to go back to college, get their GED. Tiara, tell us about your experience at the center. So what, what has the center done for you? What have you learned while you're here? Um, well, since I've been here, I've um, picked up uh, my basic educational um, refreshers as far as like reading, math, and vocabulary, such of that nature. Um, I've also completed all the career preparation um, work, um, completed basic training, basic vocational training, and also uh, advanced vocational training as well. And they have um, help me, encourage me to pursue my uh, interest in welding. In welding. So as, I mean, that was my next question yes. because Teresa mentioned a Band-Aid job, but you want yes. a longer term job. Yes. So why welding? What got you interested in that? I um, was interning for Kids Around the World. Sure. Um, Kids Around the World is a nonprofit organization. The group that builds playgrounds, exactly. right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, I was with them for a year and um, I've seen a guy there 
um, actually welding and I wanted to try it and I asked and from there on I fell in love with it. Teresa, you mentioned that in a non-COVID world, right. the center is open to the public. Absolutely. It's not right now, but I'm sure during the time that the center has been here, you have seen a lot of success stories like yes. Tierra's, right? Absolutely. Uh, how does that make you feel knowing that you're a part of this bigger group, but you actually you see the impact that you're having almost right away? That has always been my favorite thing about this job and previous jobs is watching people come along and discover themselves, build their self-esteem and their confidence so they can go after the goals that they have. It, that's an amazing thing. Um, paychecks are really nice, but that's the payoff. And it clearly is working. And it's yes. working. Thank you so much, Teresa, for sharing the program with us. And Tiara, thank you for sharing your story. And good luck with the welding career. You're welcome. Thank you. So just in the short time from when we had filmed that video mm -hmm. to today, Tiara had actually pulled me aside in the lunchroom today and said, I have good news. Yay. And she has a full-time job that she is going to be starting at Evergreen Machine Services as a CNC. So just how God it continues to work in her life, even since we filmed that video, which yep. is so awesome. Which wasn't even that long ago, you know, and the work center doing amazing things and giving the, the, the folks here the confidence that they need to get out and, you know, be able to achieve those careers. So congratulations. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> and another resident, if you caught Good Day State Line on Sunday, you might have heard a little bit of his story, but we have a longer testimony for you to hear of him tonight. I would like to introduce you to Jesse, a men's life recovery resident. I was born with spina bifida, and that uh, has a hindrance on my spine and my lower half, and that caused me a lot of pain on a day to day basis. So I started coping that with that by using Vicodin and over-the-counter medicines, which that didn't end up helping, so I ended up using opiates, stronger opiates. And after I got addicted to those opiates, I wasn't able to function properly, go to work, do my day-to-day -day actions and functions properly, so I started to use more to cope with that pain and not get dope sick and then I ended up quitting my job so I can focus on getting high and I landed in jail. I spent two months in jail. That was just enough to make me realize that I was an addict and I needed help. And that's, that's how it got me here actually. My mom has been telling me about this place for a while and I always had that conception. It's a homeless shelter. There's nothing going on there. There's just a bunch of bums, addicts, alcoholics, dropouts, low lifes that are there. No, it's not, that's not the case at all. I mean, when you come into this building, you can just feel God's presence, and then you do get open arms welcoming you. Started to find out who I really was. Start peeling away those stone layers that you've had built around your heart and your soul for so long. And then before you know it, you're walking around, having emotions, having deep conversations with people, getting to know people, and actually caring for people, uh, because you have been shown love in this building. It's an amazing place. If, if it weren't for this place, I would have died. Coming here has showed me that God has always been present in my life, and that I don't need to turn my back on Him anymore, because He loves me for who I am. He made me this way, so embrace it and love it. I really didn't think there was hope. I thought I was going to be stuck in this opiate haze for, for the rest of my life until I died. And I mean, God disciplines his children just like a father would discipline their son or their daughter. God reached out and put me in jail. And I mean, I'm looking back at it and that saved my life. If I didn't go to jail, I could be six feet under right now and that's rock bottom. I mean, if you reach rock bottom, you can always bust out a jackhammer. You can keep going down and down and down until you die. So, God, if he didn't intervene in my life at that point in time, I could have been very well dead. And I'm thankful that he put me in jail. That saved my life. And I want to better myself, of course. I want to help people like I've been helped in my past with physical therapy, my addiction, schooling. I want to do something to give back to people. Even if they never helped me before, I just want to help people because that is what makes me happy. And in the, time of, uh, in the time of darkness, people always need help. People need help even if they don't ask for it. We're all stubborn folks, so we need help. And I would like to be one of those people that do offer a helping hand to someone, you know. I think that would be uh, the light in my life is to get to that point. There's hope in us. There's hope for us. 
God does love us and God has a purpose for us. And I mean, just don't give up hope. Keep going, keep your chin up. It gets better, it really does. You just gotta believe in yourself and believe in God. Such an important message there. It seems tough and maybe you're in a situation where you, you feel like you can't overcome whatever obstacles you have, but it does get better. It does, and our residents learn here that with God, anything is possible. And it's just so amazing to see their stories and just how their lives are transformed when they, when they get that. Once again, back to how important it is to have faith as part of the program yes. here. We want to read some more names from very, very generous people who have helped our total get boosted a little bit. We'll look at that new number in just a bit. But first, um, another one of our silver crosses gone to Richard and Linda Todd, thanks to their $1,000 donation. Wow. Thank you, Richard and Linda. And Marie Barth for her $200 donation. Thank you. Here's a great one too. Judy and Jean Mall. So Judy used to work here at the Rescue Mission and yes. actually helped originate this telethon back 23 years ago with Randa Noble. Yes. And so Judy and Jean, that's worth a round of applause, right? Judy and Jean uh, donated $500 tonight. Thank you so much for that. And Kathy LaCrepa with Rockburn Mutual donated $1,000. And uh, really quickly, too, so we already saw Jeff Beto a little bit earlier, but Jeff and his wife, Ashley, donated $100. And I want to say a quick hello to them and their kids because Ashley and I used to work together years ago. Small world. And so one more, Kent Toomberg and Alex Hawkins donated $100. All of these donations add up, big, small, in between. Let's see how they're doing to our total. Yeah. So what they've done to our total, shall we? So we were at 80,000. 80,486. The new total is 90,000. 90,000. Well, and as that, it's, it's great because as that total gets higher, the limited crowd that we have here gets louder. Yes. In, yes. Our, in our Rockford Rescue Mission bubble, which is what actually exists here when yes. we talk about the Life Recovery Program. So our Life Recovery residents are watching this evening, so they are rooting for that $115,000 goal because your support makes them staying here and receiving this care at no cost to them possible, and they could not thank you more. So now we're going to have an opportunity to meet Cheryl Seo with Members Alliance Credit Union. initiative that uh, we call We Care, and it's our way of affirming that we truly care and what we do here at Members Alliance matters. And Rockford Rescue Mission is like-minded in their passion and mission for walking hand-in-hand -hand with pe all kinds of people in all stages of their lives, and that's what we feel like we are doing here at Members Alliance Credit Union. Thank you, Members Alliance Credit Union. I have one more business that we want to highlight. Sold on Tony with, uh, powered by Keller Williams Realty Signature, um, Tony Vander Hayden um, gave a very generous donation to the mission. So let's meet up with her. I am here tonight with Tony Vander Hayden with Sold on Tony at Keller Williams Realty Signature along with my coworker Lara Herman. She is our Chief Development Officer um, and we're here to talk to Tony tonight about this awesome gift that you guys are giving to the mission. Um, and we are, we've been chatting a little bit and I've learned you have a really interesting history with the Rockford Rescue Mission. Can you share that with us? I sure can uh, and we didn't even think about this too much until I started going back into the history but I am in real estate and my husband and I even prior to real estate um, supported the mission and our kids served down there and we've done a lot of volunteer work uh, yet I did get into real estate and Gio and Nadine um, Pitney were actually uh, my clients and we bought and sold houses for them and that was a, a neat start um, to the to the relationship right yeah and you you've continued to help some of the pitneys with real estate as well we have yeah helping our ceo so that is just so awesome mm -hmm. um, that we've become connected through that yeah. and so it's been a pleasure can you talk to us a little bit of why this work is so near and dear to your heart to, to help the mission I think the mission is um, one of my favorite opportunities in town first of all it's an, a real need for our town uh, second of all uh, I, I do believe as a business owner and as a resident in this town that it's important to turn around and help the next guy. Mm -hmm. and, um, and there's a lot of people in need and they just need a really good program that will get them back on track. In fact, I don't know if you're aware of this, is one of the graduates actually works for my husband and his business. Mm -hmm. 
And it is a thrill every single day to see that that by how God has blessed us, that we're able to turn around and, and help someone who is in need. It's just it's just a pleasure for us to do that. Oh, and we couldn't do it without you and well, gifts like this. And so yeah. we are just so thankful to accept this gift tonight yes. from you. There you Thank go. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. You are welcome. Welcome to An Evening for Hope, a telethon benefiting Rockford Rescue Mission. An Evening for Hope is brought to you commercial free thanks to our exclusive sponsor, Subway. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Eric Wilson. I'm Candace King. And I'm Crystal Cohoon, Marketing and Communications Director here at the Rockford Rescue Mission. We are part of Rockford Rescue Mission's 23rd annual telethon. It's been around for a That's very exciting. long time. <laughs> Even more impressive, 57 years for mm -hmm. Rockford Rescue Mission. So this is the 57th anniversary. So uh, between like, roughly half of that time, telethons have been going on, maybe a yeah. little bit less. And over that time, those 23 telethons, two million dollars raised because of your generosity and we're just going to boost that total today depending on how much is raised after tonight yeah yeah it is just so critical to the work that we do here at the Rockford Rescue Mission because we're hundred percent supported by our community businesses organizations and churches so nights like tonight our telethon is just so important to be able to raise these funds for our people you know Crystal real fast you also had mentioned earlier that you haven't been able to have a fundraiser since all of this kind of started almost a year ago so tonight is very very important yes yeah, so our last telethon was actually January 28th of last year and then we all know COVID came and mm -hmm. everything just got canceled so we have not had an official Rockford Rescue Mission fundraiser since the last telethon so we really need to meet our goal tonight and I think this is probably a perfect time to check in on where we're at idea. with our table. Yeah, that is. Every time the, the cheering gets louder let's yeah. see what happens when we see this. So that was our There's number last time we checked in 90,800. Oh my, oh my goodness! goodness. <laughs> and keep in mind That's awesome. we have another half hour yes. to we take do. that even higher. Yes. The goal is 115. Mm -hmm. Pretty safe bet. Don't I, want to jinx it, but pretty safe bet. We will get, we'll hit that goal, if not do much better. And the phones already are ringing very, very loudly over there. Yeah, and we're in our last half hour of the show. So don't hesitate. Pick up the phone and call or go to our website, RockfordRescueMission.org, to make your donation. Um, and we're just excited to share these stories of transformation with you this evening. I want to give a special thank you to our gift and kind partners, um, Clodius and Company Jewelry, who gave us some amazing necklaces that are already all gone. They went uh, so fast. They, they did. did. They, they did. did. And Which is a sign minutes. of the generosity. <laughs> of people who are donating for sure. Yes, and if you would donate $55 or more as well, you also get a $5 Nettie's gift card. Um, and so thank you to Nettie's Mercantile, um, a Rockford Rescue Mission retail enterprise. Yeah, you know, this year's telethon, unlike any other that we've had and ex experienced in the last 23 years, uh, both you guys have done a wonderful job working behind the scenes to safely interview all of mm -hmm. the guests that you will see here uh, this e uh, evening. Social distancing measures and COVID precautions have been taken not only during that time, but also throughout the night here. Yeah, and COVID-19 has just been that word that we have just heard all year long. That and pivot um, is that the word that we have just gotten used to being said because we continue just to provide services um, to our community. And so I'm just the focus of this time is um, on COVID-19 and how it's helping, um, how the rescue mission is helping people recover from addiction and destructive life behaviors um, and how that care continues even after. Um, and so I want to introduce a video that we did um, that is just so, um, just near and dear to my heart because um, it is some of just the most important part of continuing to recovery and that is our aftercare program. When someone's going through struggles in their life, family can be very important and that's part of the focus of some of the things that are happening here at the Rockford Rescue Mission. To he here to talk more about that, Zach Stringham. Zach is the uh, Men's Life Recovery Resident Advocate and Charles Lowell who is a, a uh, resident in the Men's Life Recovery Program. Zach, tell us a little bit about your role here at the Rockford Rescue Mission. I think I probably have the best job in the building because I get to be for our residents. So we use that word advocate very much on purpose. So I get to meet with them and learn where they've been, where they are, and help them determine where they want to go. And then we get to develop a plan to get there and to coordinate resources and connect them to 
other people who can help. And over all of it, we're just trying to empower them to own their own recovery, that they're not dependent on us when they finish with us, that they're able to take what we give them and take it wherever they go. So it seems like your role is really um, a facilitator to uh, get people on the right path and in the right direction, right? Yeah, one of the things I tell residents early on is I am not the end-all be-all for them. It's my job to connect them to all the resources at their disposal uh, and to help educate stuff that they didn't know was available to them along the way so that they can really believe that recovery is possible. Family relationships are also very important for someone who's going through recovery. Why is that or how important is a family relationship when it comes to being successful in a program like this? Uh, nobody's ever done anything incredible alone and so a big part of recovery, a foundation of it is finding your community and finding those meaningful relationships that can encourage and equip and hold accountable. Um, there's significant work that it takes to restore a family relationship, but those are the relationships that travel well. Your family is your family wherever you are, right? And so uh, whenever we're able to see family relationships restored, we know that it's the power of God because there's so much hurt there. There's so much history there. There's so much obstacle there. And uh, the chance to come alongside and believe that that's possible and believe that that's doable is really exciting. Charles, tell us a little bit about your story. How was your relationship with your family before you got here? Um, throughout my addiction, throughout the years and everything like that, uh, I lost a lot of contact with all my family, pretty much. Um, so I ended up moving down to Missouri. I was down there for a couple months, kept following that, you know, that rabbit hole down in addiction. Just kept getting deeper and deeper and I told myself I can't do this anymore so that's when I decided to come back up and my mom was the only one that knew at the time my little sister didn't even know that I was coming into recovery program how's your relationship now how have you worked on restoration with your family they're they're actually saying that they can actually have a decent conversation with me now and they're happy to have a decent conversation I get to go to my grandson's uh, baptism which is a blessing within itself because if I hadn't been here and and recovering my life that would have never happened you know I've been out of both my kids lives for a very pretty much most of their life but for my son and my daughter to do this you know invite me to things like my son invite me to his wedding and it's an honor and I'm glad makes me proud I'm doing the right thing for them so I can spend time with them and my grandkids. So. If they were here too, they'd probably be just as emotional. It's, it's got to be tough to not have that relationship with your kids. It is. It is. It's very hard. Um, and to know that they're on the right track. Um, and I kind of want to say that, you know, uh, they, you know, they got it from me because seeing where I went down the wrong path, they took the right path. So if that makes any sense at all. Makes total sense. Makes total sense. It makes me proud. And maybe someone watching will see this story and see your story, find some similarities to maybe their situation, and be inspired to get some help like you did. Charles, Zach, thank you both for sharing your story. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you very much. Just a great story to hear from both Charles and Zach. And you know, our goal tonight, $115,000, although I think we're gonna change that a little bit because we're just a little over $103,000. And when you call that number, 815-966-2842, we have to introduce you to the people that you are going to be speaking to on the phone. So uh, here in the front row, we have Ellen Nelson, busy at work taking your phone calls. Next to her, Renee Evans. And remember, we wanna keep, when that phone goes down, you gotta call that number to get it ringing once again. Uh, here, right next to um, Renee, we have Ann Dittmar. Uh, thank you so much, Ann, for your time tonight. It looks like she might be speaking to uh, Tim Lawson <laughs> back there. It looks like they're, they're chatting a they little bit. They know each other well, they're both on our board. <laughs> <laughs> and next to Tim, we have Ted Tomita. So again, 815-966-2842. That's the number you want to call tonight. Yeah, so Candace, you mentioned our goal has been 115,000. And actually about a day before the telethon, we came together as leadership team and said, do we think it's too high? 
Mm -hmm. You know, during COVID this year, we just know everyone in our community, we're all feeling it in very different ways. Um, and so many men, women, and children are feeling it right here at the Rockford Rescue Mission. Throughout the whole pandemic, our doors have never closed, and we have about 133 people sleeping here nightly. Um, and so as we cut 103,000, we're getting a little crazy tonight. And Sherry Pitney <laughs> said, I wonder if we can do 120. Um, and I know in my heart that our community can make that possible mm -hmm. um, because with God, anything is possible and I even think we can beat the 120 as well um, and the money is going to people who they, they need the help they need um, just that time to just heal from their addictions heal from their destructive life behaviors um, and so now we're going to introduce you to a very special um, gentleman in our program Jermaine so you grew up west side of Chicago yeah not too far from the stadium yeah how'd you end up in Rockford tell me tell me I that ended up in story. Rockford um, my mother stayed at Woodstock, went up there, got in some trouble, and uh, 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 my, my public defender, he like, man, you have mental health issues, let's see an alternative, you just going straight to jail. So they end up, found this place for me, I came here. What has, has anything, what, what's changed for you, what's changed in your life in these this, this short time that you've been What's here? What's in my life? I ain't got to worry about nowhere to sleep. Um, and I don't got to worry about me not taking my meds or getting in trouble. Um, I'm sober now, you know. I'm around people who care, you know. Like you talking to a brother, like how you would talk to a brother or a sister or a mother about something. And you can go to them and you could think they'll pull you up. And, I mean, they make you comfortable living here because they, they actually, they going through the same thing we going through. Some of them went through Versa. What do you hope being part of the programs here at Rockford Rescue Mission does for you? What do you hope comes out of this? What do you, what do you see for yourself after this program? Hopefully I can talk to people, come back and talk to people, or talk to people um, that going through stuff, you know, teenagers that's going through stuff, and tell them, like, man, I was once where you was at. If someone's watching right now and wants to pray for you, what, how... What would that prayer be about? What would, what would you want them to pray for you for? I wouldn't want them to just pray for me. I want them to pray for everyone in this room, everyone in the world with a drug addiction. Yeah. What, would, like you, what said, would you say to someone who's going through the same problems? Uh, this would be a good place to come. You know, put your pride to the side sometimes. You know, come here. I recommend people who know people in a family that's going through problems, try to talk to them and have them to come here and see but this changed them too, you know? This is a good place. It, is, it really is. And I'm, I'm glad I picked this place. I'm glad, I'm glad I picked this place. I, what do you say after that? You know, it, it's so moving. And you were talking about how, um, you know, you weren't quite sure if you were going to, you know, have that, um, you know, total 115. We've kind of pushed it up to 120 to make that goal this evening. And you said God is going to work in those ways. It's, yep. He's going to bless you, um, bless you and everybody here at the mission. And we've just seen God working in so many amazing ways this year during COVID. Mm -hmm. um, we knew closing was not an option. We are an essential service mm -hmm. um, because homeless doesn't end, hunger doesn't end, and addiction sure has not ended. We have just seen an increase yeah. um, in everything that we have. And even during COVID, our numbers here at the Rockford Rescue Mission are higher than they were even two years ago. So even with all the additional help that is being offered um, locally and nationwide through the pandemic, um, we are still seeing such a need right here in Rockford. And that's why tonight is just so important. Um, it's just raising funds for our people um, here at the mission. Yeah, you know, our, our goal. We're going to check that number because we got some really exciting news. I am very, very excited. So 103,000 okay. was our last check-in. Our goal 115. We bumped it up to Oh my God! Yes! That quick! Woo! That quick! <laughs> and that was awesome! Five minutes? Yeah, five minutes. Five, and we still minutes. have 20 some minutes left of tonight's telephone. So let's just keep that momentum going. Let's keep just giving to the people who um, are truly the most hurting and vulnerable people in our community and just bring them that hope that um, we're all in this together. And so I want to introduce you um, to Kirsty. Growing up, um, mom. Uh, we had a lot of issues. Uh, she was 
she could be very, very abusive. Um, Dad was in and out of the picture. Um, Mom told me that he left when I was two. I started really running and not having a stable home about my freshman year of high school. It was just a lot of roughness and wanting to get away and not wanting to have to deal with the backlashes of the mood swings and and everything, you know, that were involved, you know, with uh, being with my mom through that time. I was in a relationship um, with uh, a man who would become my abuser over time. One night it became physical. Um, my son was about four months old. Um, so I became a single mom. Um, I wasn't taking care of myself. I had to put the baby first, you know. Um, and I had lost basically everything. I um, found myself um, not wanting to live, um, which led to um, having to give up my son. I ended up in jail um, for six days, something that I swore I'd never do. Everybody else did it, but not me, because, you know, I was, I'm not that kind of person. And you don't really realize how tired you are until you end up in, in those moments doing, doing the things that you're like, I would never do, but, you know, that's life. We've got connections at the Rockford Rescue Mission, and I was like, oh, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not going to go there, um, but God put it on my heart. And um, when he put it on my heart, I followed. The ability to sit down with the staff and be transparent and to have someone pray for you and love you. And, and um, I think that's another one of the big, big things is love. Love is something um, that I felt very um, indifferent about. You know, I had, uh, you know, love. Um, yeah, I'm a mom. I love my son, but this is a this is a God love. I got diagnosed uh, a couple weeks ago with the Huntington's disease that took my dad's life. Believe it or not, when I got these results, it was peace. I got peace, not fear, not suicide, not run, but I got the peace of knowing that I have a home to go to. That um, I don't have to fear that I have an amazing support team in this program and in this process and I really look forward to the to the next the next portion um, in transition to see what I'll be um, where I'll be and everything that God has in store for me there's a Psalm 119 1 through 8 and I have the NLT version of the Bible um, the recovery on the NLT version and the very last line in that scripture says please do not give up on me I would not be here I would not probably not be alive I would not be able to sit and share my story because I would not I just I would have given up a long time ago I probably would have never gotten the answer the positive result to be able to move forward with my life finally you know, but that's all really and truly, that's all by God's grace. You know, just God's grace is, it's powerful and it's ultimate. And, and I hope that, you know, everybody gets a chance to have God in their heart and feel his grace and his love. Kirsty talked about how powerful having God's grace is for her recovery, but her story is powerful as well. I mean, she said right there, if it wasn't for God's mm -hmm. grace, she might not even be alive to share her story. Right. That alone should be inspiring enough and a prime example of how important programs here at Rockford Rescue Mission are for mm -hmm. members of the community. It could be your next door neighbor and you don't even know that they're struggling or going through struggles like that. Yeah, and she is just one of 133 people on average that we have sleeping here at the Rockford Rescue Mission. And that's throughout 2020, is 133 people that are sleeping here. And we're feeding 
but over 433 meals every day as well. And so we really just look at the holistic approach of healing that person, mind, body, soul, and spirit. Um, and so part of that is that physical health. And so we have an awesome partnership um, with Mercy Health. And we met up with Joe Pra, who Joel Prowl, who is the Vice President of Supply Chain with Mercy Health, to learn more about how and why they support the Rockford Rescue Mission. Good evening. My name is Joel Pra, and I'm a Vice President at Mercy Health and a proud volunteer at the Rockford Rescue Mission. Mercy Health has been a supporter of the Rockford Rescue Mission for over 25 years. They are a perfect partner as their mission closely mirrors ours. We both strive to make a difference in our community by improving the health and well-being of area residents. Together, we do this by creating positive change that makes a lasting difference in lives we touch. When we share our passion for supporting our neighbors in need, lives are transformed and our community is stronger. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Mercy Health, for your donation. So this last video that we're going to bring you is probably one that is closest to my heart um, because we are going to meet up with five guys who have gone through the program um, and have finished, and they continue to meet to keep their connections that they made here at the Rockford Rescue Mission um, in their men's group. Tonight I am here with five faces who we've gotten to see throughout the mission um, for some time and they are coming back to visit with us tonight and telling us about where they are now. We have Eddie, we have Matt, we have Jim, we have Wayne, and we have Jeff. And they are here to talk to us tonight about um, our aftercare program and the transitional living that we have. And so, Jim, can you tell me about um, why is it so important to have the transitional housing option as you're working on transitioning back into the work field and into permanent housing? Well, it's a safe environment. It's a sheltered environment. And, you know, a lot of things come up once you're back in the, in the real world, per se. And uh, it's a good place to be because you've always got that, uh, that contact with the staff and so on and other people in the mission that you can go back and talk with and discuss. And, uh, and it's accountability. Yeah. And Matt, can you tell me a little bit about um, when did you come to the mission and what brought you here? Uh, it was a while ago. I probably was here for about two years, um, and I was pr I was at the lowest of the low, and that's a, 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 I call her an angel of a social worker found this place for me. There was two places I had an option. One was in South Carolina, and one was in Rockford, and uh, I never honestly, being from Wisconsin, planned on coming to Rockford, but this is where I ended up, and this is where I was supposed to be. And now it's home. Yes, definitely. Awesome. And so I hear that all of you guys see each other about weekly for a men's group. Jim, can you talk to us a little bit about your, your men's group and why that's been so crucial to just all of you guys just continuing in recovery? Well, you know, we've pretty much all gone through the missions program and the transition program together. We know each other so well that if one of us walks in that door and we can tell right away if there's something wrong, and uh, you know, again, it's about accountability. And uh, you know, we made some great friendships here. We're all saved, uh, so we have that Christian connection. Uh, we're all part of a support group, so we, whether it be AA or NA, so we have that connection. Um, and it's a men's group, so uh, we can invite anybody we want. We don't limit people that are only addicted or only Christians. And uh, you know, it's it, again, you know, it, it's that camaraderie. And, uh, you know, when I need something, I know I can, I can lean on any of these guys and they'll be there for me. That's awesome. So thank you guys for sharing that with me. I got one last question for you guys. How many of you guys are currently employed? Awesome. And then how many of you all have stable housing? Awesome. So the, the connection is working for you guys and the mission. We're just so happy that we were able to help each and every one of you and just get to know you and your hearts and your stories. And Can I say one last thing? Yeah. I'd like to thank the mission for everything they've done for myself and the gentleman standing here and quite a few other people. And to everyone out there that's donating the mission, you're looking at five miracles. And that has a lot to do with your donations and your time and volunteers and everything that goes on here. Uh, the mission is a godsend. It's a faith-based program, and uh, without it, I don't know where I'd be. Thank, Thank you. you. 
we're Thank inspiring. Thank you guys for yeah. sharing your stories. And that was really, it was powerful and impressive when you asked them about um, housing and steady work and things like that. And they all, all raised their hands. Raise it's a testament hands. to yep. the program. And that is just five of over 70 men and women who have been in our recovery program this year. Um, so we have a special surprise coming up here at the end. But before we wrap up for the night, we're going to do a review. A couple more donations that have been made. We want to thank um, Thomas Davidson for his donation of $50. Uh, Cindy from Loves Park, you've got a donation here of $200. And Jim and Cindy Walzer, in recognition of their generous parents, Mab Mabel and Elmer Pohl, and Hildy and Emmett Walzer, $500. Thank you for your generosity, Jim and Cindy. And I know this name, Karen and Al Mackey, that is my in-laws, so thank ah. you for your donation. <laughs> Yes, thank you. Jeff uh, Beto, thank you for your uh, donation as well. And Peter and Jan Carlson, um, also a member of, is it Peter or Jan who's part of the Elder Council? Yeah, part of our Elders Council. So we have men um, who serve on our Elders Council to help give us spiritual guidance throughout the year. And we really have been leaning on them so much this year for prayer and just support and just keeping us rooted um, in our cornerstone that is Jesus Christ. So not only are Peter and Jan donating tonight with their pocketbooks, but also giving their time when yeah. it comes to the council. Yeah, and you might notice you've got a couple numbers there on the bottom of your screen. That 132-630 is where we are at right now. So we surpassed that goal. Right, that if you goal, remember, the original goal was 115,000. Yeah, we bumped, bumped it up, up to 120. And now yeah. we're 12,000 over that. And that is all through you guys at home. So thank you so much for that. So should we take a, a look at our final total for the evening? Why not? Should we turn so. the well, We have about well, two or three minutes left in the show, or should right we wait? There. Nope, right there at the bottom. So that is current. So so that is current, yes. 132. It's not quite as dramatic without the drum roll, but, <laughs> but it is just as exciting. One, almost $133,000. I mean, that is absolutely awesome. amazing. Thank you guys so much. So we want to just give a big special thank you to our viewers tonight. Um, that total would not be possible without you guys. That was an intentional action of picking up the phone and calling, getting on our website and making that donation. Nation. And all because our telethon is over right now, um, you can still catch it on our Facebook after. So make sure to like us on Facebook and you can watch it um, and share it with your friends and family as well. Um, so thank you to our viewers. Also, thank you to WTVO for just helping us host this evening um, and just making it so special for the last 23 years and helping us raise all these donations. And especially to Kelly Latimer, um, the station manager, um, for just making this night possible. And a huge thank you to Sherry Pitney. Um, she never wants me to thank her on air, um, but I still do anyway for um, just supporting the Rockford Rescue Mission. She can't stop course, you now. It's life for me. Yeah. sponsor, <laughs> Subway. Um, so we have a couple of faces that we want to show you tonight um, of just people that your donation is helping. Um, and so we have our life recovery residents that are joining the phone bank. We have them close together because they all live together anyway. It's really um, like you've, you've heard but, of the NBA bubble, yeah. which exists. This is like Rockford Rescue Mission bubble. So yeah. those are people that your donation is helping and so they each have an amazing story of transformation um, even though you only got to hear a few of them tonight and so a special thank you to Clodius and Company Jewelers um, as well as Treehouse Video, Chris Plummer and Kurt v uh, Windhausen um, for the amazing testimonial videos that we view this evening um, and just the faces um, that tell their story at the Rockford Rescue Mission. Thank you. you some, some of the best so wavers much. and clappers in the yeah. biz. They, we didn't have to rehearse that at all. They're good at that. Yeah. Right. So should we take a look at our final total? Oh, final total. Yeah. For, well, we've well, got. And before we turn the tote too, you had a lot of people to thank right here at yes. Rockford Rescue Mission. Um, as far as WTDO staff, we are the two people that you see, right? But there are probably 20 to 30 people behind Many the more. scenes mm -hmm. that work for us when it comes to operating cameras and putting graphics together, and directing and audio and producing and all that stuff and putting scripts together. Um, this could not happen without them. Right, so yeah. thank you to them as well. Let's do so the final let's toast. Check our final number, $132,630. One thirty three. There you go. Thank you. Oh, Please <laughs> thank you if you donated. I remember as uh, Candace or Crystal said, you could still donate. But yeah. thank you for your help tonight. <laughs> and thank you from the people you benefit. God bless. Thank you for watching An Evening for Hope, a telethon benefiting Rockford Rescue Mission.
An Evening for Hope was brought to you commercial-free thanks to our exclusive sponsor, Subway.